Welcome to IFC Salford. How does it feel? Yeah, I'm made up. Uh, delighted to be here. Uh, I think it's a great opportunity for myself and Dominic. And you know, all we want to do is, you know, you look outside on the pitch. We just want to get a winning team and you know, get everyone behind us and take us up the league as quick as we can. Uh, you've come from from a Blue Square Premier Club, so a, a club that's now in the Blue Square North. Uh, some would say that as a as possibly a backward step. Um, can you tell us what, what attracted you to IFC Telford and what, what the thoughts behind the move were? Well, to be honest, I think I've always had an affinity. Well, I have had an affinity since, obviously, the Unibond days when, when I was at Bairsco. Uh, but Telford doesn't need to sell anything to me. You just look at the place, you look at the surrounds, speaking to Lee, listen to where he, where he wants the club to go. And, you know, that was enough for me. And as soon as that was, you know, become... You know, crystal clear that they wanted myself and Dominic to come to the club. You know, there was only going to be one answer. Sure. And you mentioned the the Unibond days. Uh, of course, my, most Telford fans will remember the uh, the game in two thousand and seven when Bursko came here and, and won the championship. Uh, was there anything on that day in particular that, that left a left a mark on you? I think what, what left a mark on me that you know not just that day that season was the fact that you know whenever we come to played against Telford, Rob and Larry's sides, they were always up for it. Uh, we knew what players were going to be playing, the, the players had an affinity with the fans uh, and it didn't matter if one or two of the big players were missing, we knew we were going to always have a hard game but likewise they knew they were going to get a tough game whenever they were going to come to us and you know, obviously the last day was you know, it was fitting, it was appropriate that the two teams ended up playing each other on the last day and you know for Bearsco it was great for Telford, you know, but it actually showed the character which went through the club that the way that they went back in the playoffs. I remember stood on the pitch at the end with Rob saying, you know, you'll win the playoffs, which they did. And uh, you know, we've got to get that little bit of, you know, character what, what Telford were about and, and what Bearsco were about them and get it back on the pitch for this season coming. Yeah, you mentioned mentioned character and you're inheriting uh, a, a team and a, and a club, um, but perhaps over the last couple of years hasn't hasn't enjoyed the best of fortune and, and maybe he's got in uh, have a winning habit and maybe into a losing habit. Um, how do you go about, about turning that round? I know you say it like the last couple of seasons, but I think if you look, you know, for any part-time club to to actually stay up in the, in the Conference Premier. You know, it's a good achievement. It's it's always tough for the second season, which you know Telford have found this year. Uh, but what's happened's happened. It's gone. You know, our job is to actually make sure that we, you know we get it back. Uh, the way I'm looking at everything is positive. We just want players to play for us who, who want to go on that pitch and win. Uh, because as I said, players you know resemble yourself, and you know I was a winner, so was he, and. You know, we don't need big names, we don't need reputations, what we need is someone who's going to put the shirt on and going to you know, run through a brick wall for us and make sure we get the results on a Saturday afternoon. Uh, you've won the Blue Square North twice already with Southport. Uh, obviously you'll be looking to make it a third with, with Salford. Is there a formula to success in this league and, and if so, what is it? Well, I think in 2004-05 when Southport won the league, the, you know, that was pretty simple. We were by far the best team in the league. Uh, if he wanted to play, someone wanted to play against us without play them. Someone wanted to fight against us without fight them. Uh, it, it had everything, goals all over the place. But in 2009-10, we weren't the best team in the league, but we had a method. Uh, it wasn't always pretty on the eye, uh, but it was a case of we did what we did. We ground teams down. You know, we were, must have been horrible to play against. Wouldn't say at the time we were overly delightful to watch, but you know, with the spending power of Fleetwood and you know the Alfretons and. As I said, Telford at, at the time, you know, it was really, really strong competition, and uh, you know, we got over the line by the way we were. And again, the team was full of winners, and that's all we wanted. And we knew going on the pitch, no one would ever get an easy game against us. Now you mentioned a team, a team full of winners. Uh, in terms of your, your player recruitment, um, where do you see most of the players coming in? They're going to be coming from obviously there'll be a massive influx of of players and, a lot, and possibly a lot going out. Uh, will you be looking to the lower leagues or would you be looking at, as we have done the last couple of seasons, at, at players that are dropping out of the league possibly? No, well, to, to be honest, if anything, I can avoid players dropping out of the league. I was. Uh, you know, if you look at my track record, all, most of my signings come from lower leagues. A lot of them come unproven and that's why if you look over the last few years, South Pole's have so, so many players into, into the full-time game. It's not rocket science, it's not you know coincidental, it's the fact that we take him at a younger age to give him a chance to actually have you know, a platform to deliver the skills and sometimes when they have a dip in form we leave them in the team instead of just you know, getting them out as quick as because I think you learn more when, you, when the going's tough 
and the ones who come through the other side tend to become good players. Even the last day of the season, so far we just sold Sean Worley, who you'd say two years ago everyone was saying, you know, don't touch him, and then he's turned out to be probably, in my opinion, one of the best players, if not the best player in the conference this season. Andy Parry is a young lad who's come through at Blackburn, got released, was in no man's land, and you got him back. And for them two to get a move to Luton Town, you know, it was great for them, great for the careers. But again, it's good finance going into Southport. Yeah, again, just touching on, on characters, I, I know last season the club perhaps suffered with some, some difficult characters in the dressing room. Are there any of that of that squad that you'd think about retaining or is it going to be a, a, a clean sweep? Uh, well, I'll just, as far as I'm aware, I know there's two players contracted in the fact of Ryan, the keeper, and Dan Preston, the centre-half. Everyone else is out of contract and to be, you know, no, no one holds any gun to my head. You know, you win one game of thirty odd games, you know, no one's got an argument. If, you know, if, if people turn up for pre-season, work hard, show us that they're good enough to be here. Well, that's fine. If they don't want to turn up, and work hard pre-season. They don't want to turn up at all for pre-season. That's their prerogative. And uh, just, just finally, in terms of uh, next year, what do you see as the, the target for this football club? To be very, very competitive.